blessed Wednesday morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. As always, glad to come together with you for another day, not taking for granted the uh, grace of God that allows and causes me to be able to be here to once again share God's word with you. And today, the thought for the day was going through Zechariah chapter 13. When I came to the end of the chapter, verse 9, it speaks of how God <clears throat> oftentimes will take his people like silver and gold and precious metals into a fir fir fiery furnace of affliction. Isaiah chapter 48 verse 10 reminds us that it's often in the fiery furnace of affliction in our lives that God chooses us and how true God's word is. In 1985, God saved me at the age of 19. I was in an institution for a while as a teenager and coming home uh, a man that I never met in my life had just moved into my neighborhood, uh, called me over to himself some 38 years ago and said, you look like an angry young man. He brought me to church, introduced me to Christ. I, by the grace of God, I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And so it was in the furnace of affliction in my life when I was in so much despair as a young man that God chose me. Oftentimes, people can attest to that. Unless they were brought up in a Christian home uh, where they followed their mom and dad to church and just were brought up in church and were spared a lot of uh, the pain and suffering in life, they came to faith in Christ. But my friends, even if you're brought up in church and in a godly home and had a stable background, you're going to fight, face affliction in life. Trials and tribulations are gonna come, especially as you get older. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 1 reminds us to remember the Lord your God in the days of your youth before the days of trouble come uh, when you get older you have more physical ailments and I can attest to that these last few years uh, between a hernia pinched nerve more and more arthritis in my knees and my back my allergies have gotten worse especially after COVID and as you just get older that's just life but I also realize that when we're tested in life, that's often when God is most closest to us. In Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 to 14, God told Abraham to go to the town of Moriah, the land of Moriah, and take his only son Isaac up into a mountain and sacrifice him there. You talk about a test. What if God was to tell us to take our only children, our only child? I had two daughters. I have two daughters. But what if God told me to sacrifice one of my, my oldest daughter when she was still little as my only child? Would I be able to listen to God and trust him? Abraham did. And through this trust of uh, Abraham have, had in God, he is a picture and an example for us of what faith is. In Psalm 66, verse 10, we're told that God often will test the heart. He, he, he tests us. He prunes us. He'll correct us. A little later on in Psalms, Psalm 119, verses 67, 71, and 75. You could check out those <clears throat> scripture verses for yourself. Where it says that unless I was afflicted, I would have gone astray. It was good that I was afflicted, the psalmist said, so that I would obey your word. Oftentimes, God will afflict us or test us and bring us to some situation in life so that we will trust in him more, cling to him. Because I believe by nature, we're all about ourselves. Philippians chapter 2, verse 21, the Apostle Paul reminded the church of Philippi, and it's for us too, that by nature, we're all about preserving ourselves, our own interests, not the interests of Christ. Even as a Christian, unless God is drawing us to himself and correcting us and pruning us and training us and instructing us to his word, we're all about ourselves. I know I am. Albert Barnes was a theologian. He was born in 1798. He died in 1870. And he would often say this, that in his day, and that's many years ago, people were just basically about themselves, even in the church. And as time gets older and older and time goes on, it's only going to get worse as 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5 reminds us in the last days what's going to be happening before Christ's return. 
And then the evidence of what will be happening is seen in those verses. And the first thing it says in 2 Timothy 3 is that people will be lovers of themselves. My friends, that is our nature. Our nature is just to be about ourselves, our interests, our needs, our worries, uh, self-preservation, our enjoyment, our comfortable. I often say we're creatures of comfort. We're creatures of habit and comfort. We want to do the same thing basically every day, same routine, and we don't want to be bothered. We numb ourselves if we have any kind of pain. If you have a headache, you run and get Tylenol right away. I'm not saying, you know, you shouldn't take care of yourself, but it's often times when we go through difficulties in life that it's then that God is drawing us to himself. I hope today's devotional video, my friends, will be a reminder to accept the correction of God, the discipline of God in your life. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5 to 11. You could read for yourself that passage of scripture where it basically says that just like an earthly father or mother that loves their child, they will correct them when they're doing something wrong so that they will go on the right path to stay away from trouble. Sadly, today, a lot of parents try to baby their parents, I mean their children. They spoil them. They want to be their buddy instead of their guardian and their, and their leader in the home. They neglect their responsibilities. And as you often hear me tell you, I've been working with trouble in the inner city kids for over 30 years now between a group home and a public school system. And I could tell you that so many children today are growing up with parents that are either not involved in their life or if they are involved, they just want to be roommates. What I mean by that is they just take their kid, put them in their room with their iPhone and just get out of my hair. Let me do what I got to do. That's not the God we serve. God loves us too much to allow us to go in our own way. The Bible says that we are like sheep by nature, Isaiah 53, verse 6, and we go astray. But God loves us too much to allow us to do that. And oftentimes he will have to correct us. He'll have to prune us. What I mean by pruning is like I've been doing this at my job the last couple of days as a custodian, pruning some of the branches off the fence line in my school. It's very painful work, very tedious work. And oftentimes God will bring a pruning process in our lives to correct us. To, to It could be painful, but it's going to be beneficial. My friends today receive the correction from a loving God because what he he has his best he has your best interest at heart and as that old tv show says father does know best heavenly father lord god i thank you for my brothers and sisters in christ who will see this devotional video today may we be reminded as the apostle peter reminds us in first peter chapter one verses six and seven that trials will come they're temporary but it's to test our faith that draws closer to you in Jesus' name I pray. God bless you all.